OSI Render 2.2 lets you open different kinds of images, such as GIFs, PNGs, and JPEGs. This doesn't just let you visualize your favorite cat GIF, but also opens up massive artistic opportunities, such as um, messing around with different kinds of images that you create in different software that you want to visualize here. Unlike some of the existing file types, such as SVGs, object files, and text files, we're now into the realm of uh, raster-based files, where we're dealing with pixels and not vectors. This might be seen as a bit of a weird move um, for something that's completely vector-based, but it opens up the flexibility that we get from existing tools, such as video editing software, GIFs off the internet that are super easy to get a hold of, and your images that you might capture through another means. This move opens up a lot of the creative freedom from the visual side of Aussie Render, which wasn't already there. When you first open an image, you might notice it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look like what you expected to, and in all honesty, it just looks a bit crap. I've got a, a GIF of something that you should recognize, but you very much can't at the moment. So you're gonna have to tweak with a few different settings to get Aussie Render to visualize it properly. The first thing and most obvious thing is the frame rate. You can see here, the movement just looks a bit weird and like sluggish. So I'm just gonna set this to 30, which was the original frame rate of the GIF and it looks a bit more fluid now. I can kind of understand what's going on. I can see a sort of shape of a shoe, maybe some arms, but it's still not clear at all. So the next thing we wanna play with is the image threshold. The way this uh, actually works is by starting at a random place in the screen, seeing if that pixel is bright enough to visit. And if it is, then visit it. Otherwise we ignore it and go to the closest neighbor. The way we do that is uh, by flipping a coin. We say, okay, is the closest neighbor bright enough? If, if it is, then we flip a coin and then that determines whether we visit it or not. If we don't visit it, we just go to another close neighbor. So the way this is working is by sort of like tracing out the image uh, in a random um, format. So we need to use this image threshold to control the threshold at which we check to flip that coin. So the lower this threshold is, the more um, likely we are to visit the image. And so um, darker pixels in the image, we're more likely to visit. That's what the problem is here. Like we're not visiting many of the, of the pixels. So half of the image is just not visible. So we can try reducing that a bit here. And immediately you'll start to see the image come into play. If I put it to zero, it'll basically treat anything that isn't completely pitch black as able to be visited and I'll be doing that coin flip and random navigation of the image all the time. So that's what I've done here. And for this example, it works really well. So now we can clearly see the uh, you know infamous breakdancing clip that you might have seen elsewhere. But there's another aspect to some of these settings that you might wanna play around with. And the second one is the image stride. This controls how much you're jumping between different pixels in the image you're trying to render. Immediately, I can increase this and you'll see its effect. It makes it a, a much lower quality. And you might be thinking, well, why do we have this slider if making it bigger just makes it lower quality? Why not just do you know super low image stride and have it really high quality? I'll show you what happens if I put this all the way to one. You'll get a rough idea of the shapes, but you very much can't uh, piece together any detail. And that's because it's trying to draw it too slowly. So it will draw out the image in lots of quality, but it might not draw it quick enough before the next frame comes. So you won't actually see the sort of fluid motion in the image. So increasing this a little bit in this example gives us a really nice clean image, but this might differ depending on the resolution of the image you're using and um, some other effects. One of the last things we can mess around with is inverting the image. The settings that worked on that breakdance clip do not work well for this clip we started with. If I, first of all, invert the image, you can immediately see it's working a lot better. It's a bit quick, so let me put it back to 15. And um, we can reduce the image stride a bit to get it a lot nicer. So now we've got some nice fluid motion that looks really awesome. Like with all the other file types, all the image effects work perfectly with this file type too. So you could apply a rotation to the image, you could swirl it. You could apply a smoothing effect, which is gonna sort of change the qualities of the image. And obviously you can apply these in conjunction too. I hope this gives you a good understanding of some of the new capabilities in Aussie Render now that images are supported. If there's anything else you wanna learn, just let me know in the comments and I'll get around to it. Thanks.